apologies, but we don't think our YouTube stream is working this morning. We'll be with you soon. Good morning. Oh, anyone here? <laughs> Good morning to those who are gathered on Facebook as well. Lovely to have you with us uh, this morning. We think we've got a problem with our YouTube stream, so um, if you sometimes watch on Facebook or comment on Facebook and watch on YouTube, you might find you have to do it all on Facebook today, so apologies for that. It's great to be together. Has everyone had a lovely Christmas? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Um, who didn't have turkey on Christmas Day? What did you have? Yeah, Joyce? Gammon. Gammon. Mm, very nice. And I've heard that somebody else had beef this morning, who's not telling me now. But I had turkey. Did you have turkey, Colin? Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Right. There we go. No other offers? Anyone for a nut roast? No. This morning on Facebook, we're asking a few different questions. We're asking whether you've got a favourite carol this year or whether this year you have maybe started a new Christmas tradition because it's been a little bit different. Or the other question I've got is just whether there's anything you want to be thankful for this Christmas. So I'll be asking that here in the cabin in a few minutes as well. But on Facebook, I know we've already started to get some answers to that. So uh, do, uh, do join in there. So I think we're ready to worship. Do you feel in the mood to worship? Because God is good all the time. He is good. He's worth our worship. Absolutely. Um, if you're in the cabin, would you like to stand? Because I'd like you to uh, engage in worship in every way possible. And we'll have our opening words. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. I bring you good news of great joy. A saviour has been born to you. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Alleluia. He is Christ the Lord. Alleluia. We worship and adore him. Alleluia. And now we're going to sing our first carol, which is See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw. If you're at home, join in with gusto. If you're in the cabin, hum along or jig or whatever it may be. Please be seated there. Thank you.
came to an abrupt end, didn't it? And uh, as we finish with that song, um, we're going to pray to God. So let's just have a moment of quiet before the collect, the special prayer for today. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love. Gather the nations to be one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I started the Facebook conversation last night. I thought I'd see if I could get any responses ahead of today. So I'm going to share a couple of responses from last night, and then I'm going to see if we've got any responses in the cabin or on Facebook. So um, I heard from Lorraine. It's great hearing from Lorraine. Some of you uh, will remember Isabel Duncan from Christchurch many years ago, and Lorraine is her daughter, and she keeps engaging with us, which is brilliant. And she said her favourite carol is Silent Night. And she says, it's been her favourite for as long as she can remember. The words telling the story of the birth of Jesus. And something I've done this year, of course, is to stay home. I don't know whether that's going to become a tradition for people. Maybe people have enjoyed having a quiet Christmas. And she's thankful this Christmas for her two grandchildren and for her health and her job. So she answered all three questions for me in one post. Marlene answered as well. And she said her favourite carol is, O Little Town of Bethlehem because it reminds her of a time when her David was 18 months old and he's a lot older now, he's an adult now, well and truly an adult, isn't he? And he was rushed into the children's hospital and put into ICU. That must have been scary, mustn't it? And they thought he had meningitis. And Marlene and her husband Dave sat at his bedside distraught when a group of carol singers came in and sang. And the vicar who was with them came over and prayed with us and blessed David. Um, two days later on Christmas morning, he went, she went in at seven o'clock in the morning to see him and he was out of ICU and on a ward sitting up and eating breakfast. Truly believe it was a miracle, the power of prayer. And so that carol, a little town of Bethlehem, brings that little miracle, or quite a big miracle really, home to her each Christmas. So anybody here in the cabin got anything they'd like to share with us? A favourite carol, a special memory from this Christmas? Or anything else? Yep, Lynette. My favourite carol is in the bleak midwinter for the mm -hmm. last verse. What can I give him? The gift, giving him the gift of our hearts. Yeah, yes. brilliant. Yeah. What can I give him? Poor as I am. Yeah, if yes, I were a shepherd, true. I would bring the lamb. I think um, next Sunday is Epiphany, and I think we especially think about that. And I don't know whether we're going to sing that carol next Sunday. It'd be really nice if we do. So, anybody else in the cabin got? That was mine as well. I can't say much. In the bleak with I remember uh, years and years ago when I was a young lad in the choir here at Christ Church, it was my favourite um, song of Christmas because of the tune, really. But as I grew older and looked at the words, as Lynette said, the final verse says, what can I give him? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I'd do my part. But what can I give him? We can give him our hearts. We got anything on Facebook, Joyce? Uh, Val, Val says, "Oh, holy night, sung by a choir, nothing better." Mhm. Mm Thanks, Val. Um, Diane says, "Joy to the world, and oh, holy night." And I commented and said, "That was mine too." Okay. That's it. Any other comments about new traditions or? No, nothing. Anything else? No new traditions this Christmas? Um, how about, um, what was my other question? Anything to be thankful for this Christmas? No? Nobody's thankful for anything? Being here. Being here? I'm glad we're thankful for something. I might have created a new Christmas tradition because um, with a little more time on Christmas Day, I said to you I was going to go carol singing at the house of a friend. And um, so we... Um, We'd arranged a time to go on Christmas Day to go carol singing, and uh, we arranged to meet another friend in the park before, and then my friend rang and said, oh, we haven't had our Christmas dinner yet. Can you come at half an hour later? Well, when you're walking around Liverpool in the cold on Christmas Day, it was like... So we ended up being out on Christmas Day, and we walked six miles on Christmas Day, 
um, including the trip to my friend and her mum to sing carols. Anyway, they really appreciated it, I think, but we were a bit cold by the time we got back, and I don't think I've ever walked six miles on Christmas Day, so maybe that's... What do you reckon, Andrew? Is that a new tradition for us? Uh-oh, Andrew's coming to comment. <laughs> The jury's definitely out on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any more comments? Well, maybe by the end of our service, we might have some other things that we feel thankful for uh, this Christmas. So, uh, yeah, or other carols to share. I think there's um, an awful lot to be thankful for. Um, and I'm sure more will be flooding people's minds, but not necessarily things that they want to share. So um, I'm going to ask Roy if he will come and uh, light the Advent wreath for us. And um, Roy's made a note from his last experience, haven't you, Roy? Don't blow the mouth or try to when you've got your mask on. Yeah. Do me a favour, Roy. Can you come around this side? On the, this, because actually nobody can see you. And then they can see you. So Roy's saying, don't blow out the, um, the taper when you've got your mask on. So as Roy lights the, uh, the candles this Advent, let's just think of the things that we are thankful for. The people we have a shared Christmas with. The time spent in worship, how lovely it was to, to be on Zoom and Facebook on uh, Christmas Day morning. And to be here in the cabin and to be sharing that live on a Christmas Eve night. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Let's be thankful that Roy's learned how to put a taper out. <laughs> Tra Tracy's got a thankful uh, yeah. for a beautiful day with the family and Sophie, it was wonderful. Amen. Amen, indeed. And in Tom's talk on uh, Christmas Day morning, which was shared on Facebook, Tom talked, of course, about the greatest gift of Christmas, which is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And our central candle reminds us always of his gift to us, a gift which is not just for Christmas, it's a gift for life. So uh, let's be thankful tonight, today. I don't know whether it's morning or night anymore, it seems. I'm also thankful for um, the carols around the campfire. We had a lovely time, three different times, where we gathered um, around the campfire, around the fire pit, uh, with all sorts of different ages. In the end, I think there was about 60 um, or so people, 60 or 70 people, adults and children, that came to the three different services. And they were all different, uh, but they were all so very special. I'm thankful for the, the kids and the adults being willing to wear costumes. Uh, we had a little Mary and a, a sheep and a donkey, and we had a donkey angel even. Um, we had a lovely time, and I think I'm just getting flashbacks to that. But one of the things that struck me um, was this next carol that we're going to sing. It was on a starry night. And uh, when we sang this, I think it was on the Tuesday night uh, version, it really brought it home to me um, that I wanted to be with all those angels singing to him when the bells of heaven were ringing because a child was born to be king of all the world. And so we're going to sing that carol now. It was on a starry night When the hills were bright Earth lay sleeping, sleeping calm and still
So now we welcome Jen, who's going to bring us our Bible reading. And then after that, we're going straight into a talk for us, which has been prepared by Archdeacon Pete, Pete Spears. Um, and it's a great talk, so I hope that you will uh, listen in and engage with it. So thanks, Jen. The reading today comes from Luke 2, verses 15 to 21. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. This is the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Whilst Christmas is going to be very different for many of us this year, I bet one of the things that's not going to be different is the enjoyment of the, watching the telly, the Christmas special. Last year, our family really enjoyed Gavin and Stacey. When I was a child growing up, it was The Two Ronnies, The Morecambe and Wise Show, or even Mike Yarwood Christmas special. And then, of course, we enjoy a good film at Christmas. Again, last year, I discovered a film which I had not seen before, Christmas Chronicles, about two children, home alone and Christmas Eve, who decided to film Santa Claus delivering their presents. But of course, it might be It's a Wonderful Life, or Love Actually, and my secret pleasure, Elf. When we watch a Christmas special or film, we enjoy the performance of the actors, the people on the screen. But we don't always think too much about what's going on behind the lens. Who else has contributed to making that film or Christmas special happy? Is it simply entertainment or is there a deeper meaning? In our Gospel reading today, we hear how Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. She too was grappling with the significance of what was going on in and around her. Nativity plays may not have happened in the way that we would normally have expected them this year, but what's so wonderful about them is that we see Christmas through the eyes of a child and we all have our funny stories about them. One of my favourite stories is about the little boy playing Joseph who started to reach into the crib to pick up Jesus when the little girl who was playing Mo Mary told him off in a loud voice and say, here leave him alone he's got nothing to do with you. That makes us think what has Jesus got to do with us? What is his relevance to today? Well, the birth of Jesus had been an event years in the making, and the script had already been written. In Isaiah's great prophecy a few hundred years before, he had prophesied that the people walking in darkness would see a great light. And when people first heard it, they thought, great, because their experience was one of darkness, of bitterness, of pain. They felt abandoned and bereft of God. And they felt that soon they would see his deliverance. Well, years passed, hundreds of years passed, 
and they were beginning to despair. In order to fulfill, to fulfill his promise and to bring the script to life, God needed to assemble a, cra a cast. He needed a woman willing to carry a baby before she was married. He needed a man descended from the great house of David who would be willing to marry a woman carrying someone else's baby. He needed to get them to take a journey of 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, David's hometown. He needed the baby to be born in poverty. He needed some people to make the great announcement. You can almost hear God say, action, as he lines up the great chorus of angels to declare the news above the angels, above the hills of Bethlehem. And he needed some people on the edge of society to hear the good news first. So he chose some shepherds. And he needed some people from outside the people of Israel to come and find the king. So kings were travelling from afar, from the east. But that's a story for next week. So Christmas is not a series of random events, but the un intentional unfolding of God's plotline right from his heart. But we would be mistaken if Christmas is a one-off event that we simply remember and enjoy each year. The Christmas cast that God had assembled were people just like us. And God continues to work his purposes out, as he did through them, so with us. And he still needs a cast and a crew to be a part of it. And he wants you and me. His vision for the world is the kingdom of God, a kingdom where there will be no injustice, there will be no sorrow or mourning or pain, because all that will be a thing of the past. And Jesus has established it and taught us about it. We all have a part to play in the kingdom of God. No one has failed the audition. There are no stars, supporting actors or extras. We are all equal in God's sight. You may never watch the credits of a Christmas TV special or a film, but if you did, you will see the names of all those who have made it happen behind the scenes and how they've all contributed and worked together. It couldn't be done without them. And so it is with us that we all have a part to play. Jesus' birth changed and continues to change the world. It was the possibility that now anyone could have a relationship with God. In Christ we see how much he loves us, how he is with us. He is Emmanuel. When we receive him, we are able to become children of God ourselves. And we know that he will look after us. He will protect us. He will guide us. He will love us unconditionally and help us all by his spirit and right through our lives. This has been such a difficult and traumatic year for so many of us for all sorts of reasons. And as we enter the new year, we still do not know what that new year holds and what it's gonna look like. However, we must remember that God is still working his purpose out and he still wants to use each one of us. So we must never despair and we must always put our trust in God. Jesus' birth and life 
is such good news. It ought to make us feel good, just like a Christmas TV special or film, but so much better. It is something that we should share with others and enjoy not just today, but for every day. So as I finish, I'd like to leave us with a prayer. May the babe of Bethlehem be yours to tend. The child of Nazareth be your friend. The man of Galilee, his strength to you lend. And the Christ of Calvary be with you to the end. May I wish you a very happy Christmas and a happy New Year. So I've got some other cast here with us. And uh, as Pete says, we're all invited to be part of God's story, just as those first people there who went and gathered and worshipped him. And as we gather today... We're going to sing, while shepherds watched, watched their flocks by night. I really struggle not to say the other words. While shepherds watched their flocks by night, there was no socks being washed. The angels came down, part of the cast. Let's uh, remember them and think of all who are involved in this Christmas story as we sing this carol together. Welcome Lynette, who is going to lead us in our prayers. Lynette, lovely to have you with us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you. Response to the first part of our prayers is, Father God, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you, God, for your gift beyond words. Thank you for sending us Jesus. Thank you, God, for your gift beyond words. Father God, on this Christmas Sunday morning, we come to you with hearts overflowing with gratitude and praise for the gift of your Son, Jesus. We are reminded in your word that we often don't have enough words to express this praise, but our praise comes from the depths of our hearts. Father God, we give you thanks and praise. As we come to our prayers of intercession, our response is Jesus, Saviour, Hear our prayers. We pray for those who are ill at this time, in hospital and at home. We continue to remember those who have COVID-19 and post-COVID conditions, especially those known to us. We remember those people who have terminal conditions 
and the anxiety of those who watch and wait with their loved ones. The constant pain of chronic illness is a daily burden for many. Father, we remember before you all who are suffering in this way. We pause for a moment to remember those we know who are ill at this time. We pray for all healers and carers in the NHS, the social care sector, and those who care at home. May they serve others with the knowledge of your healing power within their own lives. Jesus, Saviour. We remember before God those who are having a difficult Christmas, those who are mourning loved ones unexpectedly taken from them due to the pandemic, those who have lost loved ones after a long illness. We remember all those who mourn. May they know comfort in your presence and the practical support of others. We remember also those who are lonely. Many people have not been able to see their families this Christmas. We pray that they will have felt loved and comforted by what contact they have managed, by social distance visits, phone calls or social media. We pray for all those who have now had to leave their home due to flooding and are now in emergency accommodation. Jesus, Saviour. We pray for those who have lost their jobs because of the pandemic and others who face long-term financial hardship because of local lockdowns. As they deal with the aftermath of their situation, may they find practical solutions. Tomorrow we commemorate Holy Innocence Day. And Father God, in your mercy, we commend to you all innocent victims of conflict in our world. We pray for peace in our world that will improve the quality of life for those who are most vulnerable. You who sent your Son amongst us to be the Prince of Peace, we pray that you will work in, our, in the hearts of all peacemakers, including ourselves. May we never be discouraged in our quest for peace. Jesus, Saviour. As we are being made aware of new variants of the COVID virus, we pray that people will take responsibility and that we will all work together to keep each other safe and that the danger has passed. Jesus, Saviour. As Brexit legislation comes into effect from the new year, we pray for all involved in the process, that all will go as smoothly as possible for our country. Jesus, Saviour. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, full of the Spirit, hear our prayer. Receive our praises, fill our lives. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynette. Our final hymn is going to be one that I think Val said is one of her favourites, uh, Joy to the World. Have we had any other favourites or any other comments come in? If you can do it into the microphone, Joyce. We've got thanks. We um, got thanks Carol Mangan says, I'm thankful that we can be part of the service. Yeah, it's great to be together with all three churches this morning. Um, and Val said it was nice to be able to worship together. Great. Um, Sue Mary commented as well. Oh. Can't find it now. <laughs> Too many comments going on further down. It, it gets you get kept quite carried away. Another reason for joy this week is birthdays because it's your grandson's birthday, isn't it? It's Ollie's birthday. 
Yeah, and it's Lewis's birthday. Um, Natalie's uh, son, Lewis. Is that Lewis, isn't it? Absolutely. So, um, two, uh, two growing boys' birthdays this week. So, if you see them, wish them a happy birthday. And you will see them at the very end of the service because they will appear on the screen. So, watch out for them there. And if you spot them, you can just be shouting, happy birthday. Well, not if you're in the cabin because you're not allowed to shout. So, there we go. But joy to the world. Is this a favourite for anybody else as well? Yeah, a few nods around the room. So we're going to finish our gathering, our worship today with this fabulous carol. final prayer of blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks and praise to God. Thank you for being with us here in the cabin. Thank you for being with us across the churches of Norris Green and Croxteth and online wherever you may be. Again, apologies that our stream to YouTube this morning hasn't worked. Of course, if you're on YouTube, you don't know that because you can't hear me saying it, but such is life. And can I say a big thank you as well to those who have recorded Christmas carols for us. We've had three different lots of recordings. We've had um, Ian and, and Zanna and Jonah um, recording, and then we've had Tom's friend, uh, Martin and his friends, they've recorded some for us too. And of course, Ricky and Jane have recorded them, and that's really helped our Christmas worship. But our Christmas worship isn't quite over because next Sunday... What's next Sunday? We've said it before. Epiphany. Epiphany. So we're celebrating Epiphany. And uh, Poppy's going to be preaching. And uh, Tom and I think Roy, you're leading, aren't you? Together uh, next Sunday. So we celebrate who arrives at Epiphany? The kings, kings, indeed. So I hope that you will uh, be with us uh, for that too next Sunday. But before we uh, finish, or as we finish, we have shared on Christmas Eve night and yes, some uh, Christmas Day morning, some greetings from people at Christchurch. And we thought we would finish with those as well today because they're great. And this is where you get a chance to wave at Ollie and Lewis and wish them a happy birthday as they appear on screen. I'm at Zoom at half past 12 today. If anybody wants to join me and others, we're on my Zoom and uh, look forward to catching up with your Christmas stories and uh, get yourself a coffee or a sherry or something. It's Christmas after all. And I'll see you at half 12. Thanks, everyone. Merry Christmas. Hope you all have a lovely day and a happy new year. God bless. Merry Christmas, everybody, from us. Bye, here. We God hope you, you have a fabulous, safe, happy and a healthy Christmas. Uh, we will. We will. There's just me and him, but we're having turkey and we're having mince pies, possibly a glass of wine or two, but we're staying home and staying safe. So God bless you all. Hopefully see you, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
to everyone at Christchurch, Merry Christmas. I hope you're all being safe and I hope you're all enjoying the Christmas at this hard times. <laughs> hope to see you all face to face soon. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everyone. Hope you all have a lovely time. Merry Christmas. We said go. Oh, Christ. Happy Christmas, everybody. I hope it's a brilliant one and a great 2021 for everyone. Bye. Good morning, morning Christchurch. Merry Christmas. And here's a toast for a happy new year. With more mince pies and cream. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hope to see you soon. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye. Christmas Christchurch from Paige, Neve, Luke, Lewis and a Happy New Year. We're missing you all. Stay See safe you. everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Happy Christmas everyone. From all of us. Merry Christmas, Christchurch, and a Happy New Year. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi to all our church family at Christchurch. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. And just to finish, what's today, monkey's favourite carol? Jungle bells. Happy Christmas, everyone. Take care now. Bye. Bye.